Glitcher Junk Noodles are my latest weeknight dinner obsession. They take just 30 minutes to make and they have this unbelievable savory, spicy, sweet flavor that I cannot get enough of. I'm gonna show you how to make my version, very simple. The first thing we're gonna do is cook our noodles. You can use basically any medium or thick noodle here. I personally love fresh udon noodles. They're bouncy, they're slurpy, they're so good. They hold up the sauce really well in this recipe and they cook in one minute, which is fabulous. I'm using a pound of fresh udon noodles. If you wanna use dried noodles, be sure to check out the blog post because the weight is a bit different. Now we're gonna make the sauce. It is so easy, just five or six ingredients, but they're all very high impact ingredients. So the sauce is gonna be so flavorful. We're gonna start with two tablespoons of soy sauce or tamari a tablespoon of toasted sesame oil for those rich, nutty vibes. And now for our superstar ingredient, the gochujang. This is a Korean staple. It's made with fermented soybeans, Korean chili flake, salt, rice. And the reason I love it so much is because it has like all the best flavors in one condiment. It's spicy, it's savory, it's a little sweet, it's a little tangy, it's a little funky. It's just so fabulous. We're gonna use three tablespoons because this is a spicy girl recipe or a spicy boy recipe, whatever is your jam. If you don't want it as spicy, use two tablespoons of gochujang. You can get gochujang at East Asian markets or some well-stocked grocery stores. This one's from Whole Foods. This one is from H Mart. But you are looking for like a traditional paste style gochujang. It usually comes in one of these tubs like this. You don't want a gochujang sauce that usually has additional ingredients. It's not as complex in flavor. It's a little too sweet in my opinion. So make sure you get the stuff in a tub called gochujang, not gochujang sauce. It's spicy, but it's delicious. We need a bit of acidity in the sauce and I'm gonna use mirin. This is also a fermented product. It's a Japanese rice wine. So get a little more funkiness and a slight sweetness along with the tang. If you don't have mirin, it's totally fine. You can use rice vinegar instead. A little sweetness from brown sugar to balance the spiciness as well as to bring out the salty savoriness in the gochujang, just enhance it. You can use coconut sugar, but I prefer to use a sugar versus a liquid sweetener because it keeps the sauce nice and thick. Last ingredient, this is optional, this is gochugaru. These are actually the Korean chili flakes that are used to make the gochujang. These are pretty mild in heat, totally optional. If you don't have it or don't wanna buy it, you can omit it. I'm gonna use a tablespoon of this today. All right, that's it. Just give this a whisk and the sauce is done. I just wanna show you the consistency of the sauce. It's not super thick, but it does have this nice body to it. By the way, if you're wondering, this is definitely not an authentic or even traditional Korean dish. I just really love gochujang and sesame oil and soy sauce and how they work together in this recipe. So not authentic, but very delicious. Next up, we're gonna break down our aromatics and vegetables. We're gonna start with a bunch of scallions or green onions. We're gonna chop off the dark green tops. Set those aside for later. For the rest of the scallion, I'm just gonna cut it into like one inch pieces. The dark green tops of the scallions, these are a little more pungent. I like to use them as a garnish at the end. There's often some bruised, kind of wilted edges at the top. So first cut those off. And then I like to cut these on a sharp bias. They look very sexy that way. Sexy scallions, you might call them but you can also just thinly slice them regularly. It doesn't really matter. This looks like plenty for today, so we don't need the rest of these. We've got four garlic cloves. We'll finely chop those. And we're gonna grate one inch of fresh ginger. Oops, this bowl may not be big enough. We need a vegetable in this recipe, and I particularly love Napa cabbage in this, but it's also really excellent with bell peppers, maybe two small or medium, red, orange, yellow, not green, you know how I feel about those. For the Napa cabbage, I'm gonna thinly slice six to eight cups or handfuls of this. Like how beautiful Napa cabbage is. It's delightful, it's crisp, and it's gorgeous. But any quick cooking vegetable would be fine here. Snow peas, snap peas, finely chopped broccoli, baby bok choy, you get the point. This is about eight cups or eight large handfuls of Napa cabbage. And we'll save the rest of this for a stir fry later in the week. It's time to start cooking and everything is gonna come together super quickly, which is why we prepped it all in advance. You're gonna get a large frying pan or saute pan over medium high heat. Once your pan has adequately preheated, add a little bit of oil, generous tablespoon or so, and we're gonna add that garlic, ginger, and scallion mixture. Hot! <laughs> Let's lower the heat. <laughs> Once you start to see some color on the garlic, add in your cabbage, season with a little bit of salt. In a minute, I'm gonna show you how to turn this into a complete balanced meal. 
After about three minutes, the cabbage will have shrunk a lot. It should be tender, but not soft. We'll add in the gochujang sauce, and we're gonna double down on our sesame flavor with a quarter cup of toasted sesame seeds. Let this sizzle, stir it into the cabbage. It's gonna start smelling amazing in your kitchen at this point. Now add in your cooked noodles. Grab some tongs and just get in there. Toss for about a minute or two. And if you use dried noodles instead of fresh, you wanna make sure you save some of the noodle water because you might need it to bring the sauce together. Looks really good. I like to fold in some protein to make this noodle meal a complete dinner. If I have no extra time, I will defrost some edamame and just toss it into the noodles, or I might take some store-bought pre-cooked tofu and chop it up. But most of the time, I like to bake my own tofu because it is actually really quick and easy. Once I have my extra firm tofu pressed, I cut it into cubes, and then I toss it with some olive oil, salt and pepper, and potato starch, spread it out on a parchment paper lined baking sheet, and bake it in the oven at 425 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 minutes. Toss it halfway through until it's nice and golden. And you can prep and assemble the gochujang noodles while the tofu bakes in the oven. It is very hands-off. I like to finish these noodles with something fresh to brighten everything up. We have our scallion greens. It's gonna add a nice, sharp, fresh bite. And my favorite ingredient, I have some Thai basil here today. It goes so well with this dish, but don't worry if you can't find it. It's also delicious with cilantro. This is a big, Big one. If you have Thai basil, I just rip it up with my hands. I don't bother chopping it. Or if the leaves are small, you can leave them whole. It smells so, so, so good. Tiny drizzle of toasted sesame oil to bring all of the flavors out. If you've got your tofu, whatever protein, add that in now. This is like my dream weeknight dinner. So much flavor, didn't take very long. It's spicy, it's savory, it's just so comforting. And if you like the sound of these, you're going to love my chili garlic noodles. They take just 15 minutes to make. You can watch the video right here. Thanks for watching, bye.